Kubala, esteemed racing driver, hunting down a multiple British touring car champion in the form of Anthony Prio, hunting down Craig Davies in the red Mustang as they come across the line. Six laps completed in the yellow Mustang. Sandy Prio side by side, coming through Madrid. Can he hold it? The Mustangs door to door, stepping out, sliding the rear for Davies, keeping his foot in it, holding forth, so much pressure, going up against a driver like Andy Priu, Priu in the yellow 99 Mustang, bringing Alex Buncombe in the 15 along for the ride as we're well. So we're going to get three wide, Harry, looks, oh, just so close, sorry, going into St Mary's there, Buncombe goes, thank you very much, the typical junior karting style, oh, Andy Priu opened the door and that Alex Buncombe said, thank you very much, I'll come through too. And that has now allowed the rest of them behind. By Whittaker nearly 11 seconds. Then comes uh, Ian Simmons, next up in the low load second. Then it's James Bellinger in the Cooper. Back markers coming into play for the two Chevrons though, and it's getting tight and tighter. Bellinger now embroiled in an absolute battle with the two Chevrons behind. Bellinger holding out for the time being. Cacoldi's going to be coming under pressure from Mitchell in the 95. All white Chevron is going to make it round the outside. They close right up under braking to Bellinger in front, who's in the Cooper. And it's Cacoldi who wins out the Chevron fight because Mitchell has to run out onto the grass through the chicane. Another lap for that, please. I'll take it very much, though. Yeah, and uh, what, the one, two, nine. Uh, Bellinger puts his hand up, maybe something on the pit board there that's possibly signalling that uh, the Cacoldi might have or well, has a penalty, so not to lose too much time in, in that battle. But he's got to watch out for Ben Mitchell because Ben Mitchell has no penalties, so he will still be fighting for position. Cacoldi's going to drop down at the moment to around about sixth place. Alex Brundle's still crawling around. Uh, with some kind of issue. He was in the 122s, 121s earlier on. He's now in the 126s as we get that beautiful drone shot as this trio of cars are coming up to traffic. That's the Lola, which has to lock up the 117 of Ian Simmons, uh, which is currently in second place. So this is now the battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth, who are all within a couple of tenths of each other. It's being headed up by the Lola, and then coming through is the 129, the Cooper of James Bellinger, just behind in third. Then comes Andrew Cacaldi in the Chevron, the 81, which has a penalty, remember? Oh, lock up was there. Was there contact there, Harry? That was so close. So close for Bellinger. Bellinger in the Cooper, almost nudging Simmons through the corner, through the final chicane. I think someone once again notched the bit that's hanging off the wall on the exit of the chicane. Across the line, then, here we go. Chevron on Brundle, Brundle's rear end sticks out, he controls it nicely, but Brundle down a position, down to four, Cacoldi coming back, and now Ian Simmons in second, Cacoldi third, Brundle fourth, but Brundle 
with all the power, almost 468 brake horsepower in that GT40. Now back in front of the Chevron of Cacaldi. What a fight this is. Yeah, it's a great fight. Cacaldi's going to have a little look down the chicane. That's brave stuff. Thinks better of it. Alex did the right thing. Gave him racing room. He'll step on the gas now. Head up this slightly uphill start finish line. I tell you what, it feels fast in a car. Look at that. You're hanging on the back of a sidecar and you're just hanging on. There are no harnesses around you. It's up to you to hold on. Absolutely. These can do up to 170 miles an hour. They won't be doing it around here. They'll be doing more like 145, 150, but uh, 25.9. So we've got the fastest first split for them. So they really are on it. Now, this is a critical call for the left hander. And uh, he comes back, cuts it, misses it maybe fractionally. And look again, climbing over, getting that weight, getting that handhold. So physical as it moves about. Yeah, this is wonderful. And they are very much in the game to try and beat Steve Kershaw and Ryan Charlwood. They're oh, trying to go for the sidecar shootout victory here at Goodwood. That was beautiful coming out there. Every inch of the track right over the apex. And as they come down, she's tucked in. She's going to look. She's on the upper handhold. And in a second, she's going to swap. Reach right down to that lower handhold. Leg right up in the air. Can you get this right? Let's have a look. This is such a critical part. Oh, they were very nice. quick here earlier. And it's looking good again, isn't it? It is looking good. They got it. Oh, oh beautiful coming out of there. It's now a tuck and run to the line. Let's have a look. 121 six to beat. Across the line they've come. And they've done it. They've done it. 121.174. And the victory goes to Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. But straight, there's a little bit of constriction there, and uh, Joel's gonna speed around the outside. Is he gonna be able to do this on the final lap? Traffic holding back. Will Nuttall Yor gets onto the grass, the rear end sticks out. He manages to keep control. Will Nuttall could he have lost it on the final lap? The checkered flag didn't come out. It will now be out and waving. Will Nuttall will take the flag and will take the win. In front of you, you often just follow in because sometimes your line is compromised, but that start from Peter de la Roche, he must have been schooled at Santa Pod Dragway. Phenomenal getaway, but uh, the race craft of Andrew Hibbert put his Bradham into the lead. But the first three covered by a rather large handkerchief as they go through the chicane for the first time. Yeah, O'Brien, after that tough start in the Titan, managed to catch back up to the top two. So it's uh, Hibbert who leads from uh, de la Roche, from O'Brien. But what will it be coming into Madrid? Hib uh, Hibbert on the inside has to surrender de la Roche retakes the lead back up in front it's the alexis that leads the way and now our pole man in the titan o'brien trying to recover after his poor start as the sun glints down on these fantastic formula three cars and it's o'brien back up into second will he try and make the move for the lead once again enticing and at the moment 
it's the Titan, the blue car with the red and white stripe up at the nose with Michael O'Brien, our pole sitter, trying to go through, gets past the Alexis. Oh, a moment for car number 21. That's the other pig bay, that's Luca Ingvila's car. Meanwhile, as they say, back at the front of the race, it's nose to tail, and it's under a second between the first three runners as they come round towards the end of another lap. Our pole sitter regaining the lead then. Michael O'Brien in the Titan leads the way. They come through the final chicane. Peter De La Roche and the Alexis for the number 75, all yellow. Any loss of momentum between them and then Andrew Hibbert in the Brabham will pounce at any gap that's provided. Yeah, these top three not letting each other out of their sight. Uh, O'Brien leads, De La Roche leads Hibbert, that is your top three. Uh, then just behind is uh, Jeremy Timms, but off and with an issue. That looked like the number 14 cut of Simon Ebrington started down in 26. He's peeled off and his Brabham uh, move, though, being done for second position as O'Brien cements the lead further back. It's Andrew Hibbert coming through on De La Roche, uh, Hibbard in the Brabham making the move on the Alexis, so De La Roche down to third now, O'Brien in the Titan leads, coming through and out of the final chicane, and then comes Andrew Hibbard in the Brabham, and then in third now, Peter De La Roche in the Alexis.